The F-35 Joint Strike Fighter is a well-known aircraft. However, its unpopular cousin almost became the future of the U.S. Air Force. Meet the Boeing F-32, a production model that was part of the JSF program. Boeing took a bold step to win the largest military contract in U.S. history. Was this aircraft actually superior to its counterpart, or did its unattractive appearance contribute to the failure of one of the most controversial programs in the 1990s and early 2000s? Let's delve into the story of the X-32 fighter jet. Welcome to the era of the 90s. With the collapse of the Iron Curtain, life has become favorable, at least in the Western region. However, with the emergence of a new era, new dangers also arise, and the U.S. must be prepared to combat them, regardless of what they may be. The JSF, also known as the Joint Strike Fighter Program, was established to supplement the ATF program, which gave rise to the F-22 Air Dominance Fighter. The concept aimed to develop a new multi-purpose fighter plane that could be used by both the Air Force and Navy. This decision was made after the cancellation of the A-12 Adventure and NATF programs. The JSF was designed to replace many existing planes, including the A-10, A-16, F-A-18, AV-8 Harrier, and F-117. The project was an ambitious effort by Lockheed, Boeing, Northrop, and McDonnell Douglas to create the ultimate fighter jet for the United States. Boeing and Lockheed were ultimately selected for the program and received $750 million each to build two prototypes. Details about other programs will be covered in future videos, so don't forget to subscribe to learn more. Both companies were requested to design and construct two airplanes, a traditional fighter for the Air Force and a jet that could execute short takeoffs and vertical landings for the Navy and Marines. The government imposed a restriction on the corporations to finance the prototype's development to reduce production expenses and prevent them from going bankrupt while pursuing the contract. Lockheed developed the X-35 while Boeing created the subject of this video, the X-32. Boeing had an intriguing approach to the design of the X-32 aircraft, with a focus on reducing production costs. However, some of the design choices made to achieve this goal would prove to be problematic in the future. One such choice was the use of a delta wing, which was meant to simplify the design and cut manufacturing costs. Instead of including a folding mechanism, they opted for a larger delta wing on the X-32B with a wingspan only slightly larger than that of the Hornets with folded wings. For the short takeoff and vertical landing variant of the X-32, the option considered was to use a thrust vectoring nozzle instead of a lift fan like the X-35. The design was inspired by the Harrier jump jet and the lift fan with a foldable nozzle, which is currently used by the X-35 and the F-35, proved to be a more complex but superior solution. Interestingly, the Russians had successfully tried a similar design with the Yak-141 not long before. However, the X-32 had a controversial design feature. A wide-open grin, which had a reasonable explanation. The X-32 aircraft did not utilize a lift fan, and instead relied on a significant front intake to draw in a substantial amount of air for hover mode operation. The initial smile-shaped design of the aircraft had a negative impact on its stealth performance due to the exposed compressor blades. One possible solution to this issue could have been implementing radar wave blockers inside the intake, as done by the Russian Azu-57. However, this technology was not yet developed at the time. Additionally, the bulky air intake was necessary to accommodate the forward-mounted engine and maintain stability during hovering and flight. Despite its unconventional appearance, the large design allowed for a spacious weapons bay that could hold up to six AMRAAM missiles or a combination of AMRAAMs and sidewinders. 
Ultimately, this design was more cost effective and easier to maintain than the X-35, while still offering significantly more firepower. With reasonable pricing and resolved design issues, it was hard to imagine how it could fail. However, it turned out that the program's name, Joint Strike Fighter, was the root of the problem. The program, as the name suggests, was initiated with the aim of finding new aircrafts for both the Navy and Air Force. Both parties established their own set of requirements and parameters. During the development process of these aircrafts, the Navy updated their requirements after eight months. This posed a challenge for the engineers working on the X-32 design choices as their delta wing with a small wingspan was unable to meet the needs of the Navy. Boeing suggested modifications to the design, including a new tail design and horizontal stabilizers. But due to time constraints, these changes could not be implemented and both demonstrators had to be presented to officials. In 1999, the public was introduced to both the X-32 prototypes. The X-32 had its first flight in 2000, and both models, along with the X-35, used the Pratt and Whitney engines, which were previously used in other aircraft. The Navy designed changes for the X-32B, delayed its first flight until 2001. Despite excellent flight performance, the jet suffered from overheating issues during hovering and landing due to the intake drawing in hot air instead of cold. In comparison, the X-35 with its lift band proved to be a superior aircraft. Even then, the development of the F-35 was plagued with complications, including budget overruns and problems with project partners, whereas the potential success of the X-32 remains unknown, as it eventually lost because of its heating issue and design flaw. While some argue that the X-32 was a decent fighter, others claim it had an unimpressive appearance, resembling a flying bathtub. In contrast, the F-35 is considered an aesthetically pleasing aircraft. It's possible that those in charge were ashamed of the X-32's appearance, but it could have been used as a secret weapon in combat. Imagine the enemy pilot's reactions, seeing the X-32 shoot them down with ease while they laugh or turn away embarrassment. Even Tom Cruise couldn't make this plane look cool. However, according to lead test pilot Philip Yates, the updated production model design could have met government requirements and served as an excellent fighter plane for the United States and its allies. However, its significance lies in the technological advancements achieved during its construction, which were later implemented in the highly profitable Super Hornet deal scored by Boeing with the Navy. The Super Hornet is widely appreciated for its sleek appearance. This marks the end of the story of Boeing's X-32 design and development. Do you think it's ugly looking? Or did its design have any merit? Let us know in the comments down below.